Welcome everyone, Medina here from Arise Humanity and we have a very special video today called SOS to support our Indigenous Australian brothers and sisters with some very special guests and speakers. I'd like to start with an acknowledgement and I'm just going to put the acknowledgement on the screen. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land. I pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging for they hold the memories, traditions and the culture of original and Torres Strait Islander people across the nation. I don't like to say the word Aboriginal because ab is a negation. So I just like to say original. Um, and so I just wanted to acknowledge you both to start with. Thank you so much for joining me. Darren Price, uh, you've got some wonderful wisdom to share and experiences. And I also would love to welcome Campbell, Campbell Purvis from all the Tartaria channels and um, Spiral Up. Are those channels still able to function on successfully on YouTube? Because I know you had some issues with, with that. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, a little, little bit shadow banned, but I'm still up here. Yeah. Okay, sure. Well, I'll put the links below anyway, but it's a huge welcome to you both. Thank you. And we are expecting um, the amazing David Cole Lerp soon as well, uh, but he is going to be broadcasting from an amazing camp that he's running. So I just want to share with everyone a letter that was sent to me, which is the reason why I've put this video together. And... Um, it is a letter from a lady called Silvana and it really touched my heart because anyone with eyes to see, ears to hear and, you know, a heart to feel can see the, the, the oppression that not only the general population is going through with all the depopulation agenda and everything, but it's extremely magnified for our Indigenous brothers and sisters around the world and also in Australia, of course. And so we see this and we are appalled, um, collectively appalled by what's been happening. And so um, it feels extremely important to share this message today and SOS. Um, and this is Silvana's letter to, to me. I believe the unity of the planet begins with the Indigenous who will rise worldwide, and I believe it starts here in Australia. I am fighting to help the Indigenous Australians. This is a desperate plea, and I am hoping you can help me make this video go viral. I was called to attend an Indigenous Australian cultural immersion experience in early December 2022 in Darwin, Australia, from the 26th to the 20. Uh, oh, sorry, in December. It was amazing sitting around the fire and listening to the stories from the elders. They are such beautiful people with so much knowledge to impart to the world and they want to share this knowledge with the world before it is lost forever. And she goes on to discuss how things like, um, you know, when uh, a, a person was um, in uh, sickness, then they would have a didgeridoo played to them until they were healed and things like that, which was really beautiful to read. There are two men who run that Langarama journey and one of them is David Cole Lerpner. Lerpner is an emerging elder who also has been running a camp for suicidal and troubled Indigenous youth in Darwin. Over the years, he has successfully saved over 850 to 900, Derrida was saying, youths who would have ended up in jail and even eventually um, not been here anymore. When he saw the C... Um, experimental in our arms, um, <laughs> you know, weapon, I have to watch my words, um, um, that was um, creating the demise of the elders and Indigenous, over 150 elders that they are aware of. He was speaking out against it and very vocal on social media. He has also been very vocal about the missing Indigenous children who are never found and who are being um, I would say traffic light, I can't say that word, but we know what if we cut that word down. But since voicing his concerns, the government stopped all his funding to continue these youth camps. He's a fierce warrior with a good heart and his father, Dejalu Guruwiwi, Guruwiwi, was the great water healer for the planet. Since becoming vocal about these matters, the authorities have been targeting him and his family and constantly dragging him to court. This is a plea to help 
this man. I'm trying to get this video to go viral worldwide in the hope of getting support and raising awareness of what is happening with the Indigenous Australians. And so that was the letter that really um, got this video happening. And so big thank you to Silvana for that. Um, so what what would you like to say to that, Cam, when you, when you hear that? Um, yeah, well, I mean, this is the thing I think we're all starting to realise that, you know, um, divide and conquer, right, that's what they do. We, we've been taught that there's a difference, you know, especially in Australia between, um, you know, the, the originals and, and the non-originals. And there's always been this kind of, you know, unsaid sort of wall there, hasn't there? Even, you know, and there's this, even if it's got nothing to do with, you know, racism and all this kind of stuff, there's always this divide like you know that they're sort of a bit different especially with the way they do things but when it gets down to it they're not we're all humans and we, we've all got the same people you know attacking us right it's, it's not each other exactly. it, it, it's another entity and so yeah this is the time that we need to definitely come together and I think that you know the originals of all all lands are, are a big part of this puzzle you know they have the knowledge of, of the original laws of, of the laws of the land um, you know, they've kept a lot of their traditions, which which we, you know, in, in the West, you know, have lost, right? We don't have these coming of age things. We don't have wise people. You know, we don't have, you know, I mean, look at our leadership, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think there's a lot to learn. And I think it's all in, in coming together and, and, you know, sharing as equals is the big thing, right? It, it's just seeing each other as, as equals and sharing, you know, the knowledge we have and using that to go forward t together as one. I, I, I love what you've just said. Uh, and before I get to Darren, I'll just say that I'm extremely passionate, like so many other Australian people, about this plight of our original uh, family. You know, they're our brothers and sisters. We're all family. We're all one. And I do think also their pure DNA lineage is also a factor that they're wanting to, you know, um, um, get rid of that because that is a really important aspect of our uh, spiritual evolution collectively and, and that's a big part of it. So, Darren, I'd, I'd love you to share your thoughts on all this. Um, yeah, well, I just personally for me it's been um, a, a bit of a journey to reconnect to my culture and, and my country. Uh, it's probably started in, in Canberra. Um, when I went up there I was invited um, to participate in the return to country and spirit ceremony, which I'd never participated, you know, I, I've never even been, I've never been religious in any way, shape, or form. So, but I was open, my, my heart was open for that. So I went into it and I bent down in front of the fire and said what I felt I needed to say. I wanted to reconnect. And from that point on, it's been a bit of a, you know, journey of, um, I don't know, I've been gravitating. I've watched Lumpur for a while. I've watched Tartaria Australia, um, watched a lot of different things. Dale Holmes, as, you know, has been instrumental, but also watched Lumpur. He Lump. wanted to be here today too, uh, but he, he couldn't. He's he's elsewhere. I won't say where he is, but he's elsewhere. <laughs> but he, he sends his apologies and, and would have liked to have been here. <laughs> yes, yes. So, um per, yeah, to be able to embrace the cult or, or, or to feel a need to want to, um, so I've been, you know, just following in, into that, um, watching Lerpa and um, seeing his so-called truth-speaking activism, whatever you want to call it, but he was telling us what was happening in the Northern Territory. And for me, in Melbourne at the time, I was locked up for 270 days. So I was thirsting for, you know, knowledge, information, what's happening, what's really going on behind the scenes, you know, just trying, like everyone else, to make sense of what was happening but i think with the um yeah what you said with the indigenous they hold the key for for us to come together you know in in unity um we've been held in division for so long um they've been cast as so-called villains with land rights and things like that but if you really break it down the micro and the macro is in 1770 when so-called british empire came here um, they took over. They claimed the land that they said was, you know, not 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 habit uh, inhabited, but it was. We all know that. We, we've got the buildings here to prove it through Tartaria's journey. Mm -hmm. To understand that they walked away, you know, and and fought and tried to, you know, they already existed with the Dutch and and the Chinese and who whoever was here before that. 
to actually open your mind up and expand that and then say, well, there's more to this um, and then be welcomed into the culture and to be accepted, you know, to be educated, um, to listen, you know, to, I'd really like to de dedicate whatever's said after here to the people of Nooka in, in Arnhem Land. Um, Clary Rogers and Jennifer Rogers, who were the elders who first came out to our city and to Juma and Anita Fagio, who are Larrakea uh, people and elders. And Juma is the one who told the story of creation with sticking the sand in Alice. So to spend um, the time that we did with these sovereign uh, tribal people is just a blessing and, and it's just opened up so much. So I think that there's two messages that I'd like to get through. And one is that Lumpur is someone that we need to embrace as if anyone's followed all the other crap, he's at our tip of the spear. He's mm -hmm. fighting at the front line. He's fighting in the worst area. It's a territory. It's not a state. Um, you know, there's so much happening up there as far as what they're doing to the, the culture and they're fighting through it, you know, and they, and they want to embrace the, the rest of Australia. And, you know, um, I came back with a sovereign name, the skin name. Um, that was bestowed on me. So, um, you know, if you embrace it, there's there's so much there for you and we have a right to it. You were born on this soil. You were born on this realm. You are connected to this land, regardless of what colour, because your soul doesn't have a colour. Mm -hmm. It does in the readings, but we can't see it. So we're all the same. That's we're right. all like beings. Mm -hmm. And that's all the key. The, you know, the, the, the stories that they tell, like my perception of dream time was when I go to sleep, that that part before you go to sleep in, in the dream. It couldn't be further from the truth when they told me about how they do the dream and I was just like, oh, I, I, want, I want in, I want a part of learning that, you know, and it all comes back to being connected to that land, to have your feet on that soil, to to acknowledge that connection. You know, we're all looking for the crystal city. Well, I landed on a crystal beach. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just I was I was walking around like a seven year old kid in a in a toy toy mart. I was just picking them up and kissing them, smelling them. You know, beautiful. Lertner, he has been such a shining light, like a, a lighthouse um, through this whole experience. You know, his energies really stood out. You know, there have been certain people, you know, Graham Hood is another one that comes to mind, people that have just stood out that have been um, real way showers for everyone else. And he certainly has been that. And he uh, also, as you say, holds the keys to our Indigenous heritage. So what's, what's the story? He's basically him and his family are being harassed by by the the system like what what's the basis of it all is is it all predicated off the legal um jurisdiction and and how he's trying to stand as sovereign yeah look i guess what i saw when i went there like i've been following him like i've been following the whole you know sort of the truth movement so to speak or the um the new cage movement in some respects which i've learned off um George, when I went there, I went there with an open heart and open mind. I just wanted to connect. And I wanted, I've been watching Lamper and I saw what happened when this actual so-called assault took place and how he was set upon and, you know, how it all went down. It was all there for everyone to watch. It was filmed live. Um, now, Lamper has been, the background for Lamper is that he's been running where, where we went for Langarama is a place where he's taken over 850 to 900 indigenous youth you know ones who are struggling with the system maybe drug addiction uh, crime uh, poor education but what it is it's a, a reconnection to their sort of culture you know they yeah. I think you know without being I don't like to talk too much about it because I've only just started learning and you know they've they've yeah. embraced me and they trust me but I, I, I respect that trust but to acknowledge what's actually been happening, there's a lot of people who talk the talk. Lump has actually talked the talk and walked the walk. Now, his connection to the sovereign tribes and, and who his father was in 
in the Dreamtime talk, like his his father was a water the water healer, not just for Australia for the planet. And when it comes down to the sovereign tribes and the connection of the Americas and everywhere else, it all goes back to sovereign, as you guys have touched on many a times and led me to, you know, follow that. That's the, that's what has brought me to this moment. So when he was bringing up, it's actually, it goes back into the address like that as well. I've probably done it. We'll have to edit that. It's back into the kids and the amount of kids that go missing. generation, yeah. The percentage you get found. And then to meet, I don't know if you've ever heard of a gentleman called Craig Olroyd, but his wife was involved and Dale got harassed for bringing his story up. You know, he was pulled over by the Territory Police. When I was there, the last day, Loompa was summoned to court while we were in camp, and if he didn't go, they were going to lock him up. So he had to leave camp and go to court. On the last day that we were there after the journey had finished, I stayed an extra two or three days, and he was in court. So I went with four other participants, from, and we were just there to watch, see what happened. Mm. Now I've been following Stephen Spears and, you know, gone down the colonial track of looking into when it happened, how it happened, who did what. Lumpur was in there barefoot as a tribal man fighting against the system and had, you know, they they set him up to a degree with the people that were in there. But Craig Oldroyd came in and he's a an observer, a human rights observer and registered worldwide. So apparently the police can't touch him or they're in a, a great deal of trouble. Yeah, right, the system. Yeah, okay. <laughs> On that day, they... They actually had a judge who was sitting and presiding over the um, court case, which the funny thing was, if you looked at the the shield that was up above him, it was two kangaroos and a couple of koalas, but it just made me think kangaroo court, this is Mickey Mouse. So he's really, you know, knows his stuff um, about constitutional and, and, and the legal advice that he got and the way that he carried himself. It, there was no act that was pure pure warrior in action, um, but with a real pure heart as well. It really took me back. Then the the judge actually, you know, was telling him that he was disrespecting the um the the court's law, where Lumper actually advised them that they were disrespecting him, who was a sovereign tribal man, a lawman, who was trying to act on behalf. So it's not just about Lumper. This is about Everyone. Mm. This is a catalyst. Now, when he was in there. I'm not a lawyer or a legal, you know, guru, but I have followed crime down here in Melbourne. I live in Melbourne. You know, we have an underbelly history for a long, long time. And once you learn of the connection of the criminal code to the political code and the police code, you know, there's a lot of stories that we go back a long, long time. Even Squizzy Taylor had the cops on, you know, on his payroll. So there's... You know, we can go even further back. But anyway, he's been targeted by the New South, uh, the Northern Territory Police. So he's trying to beat them in their system, but also represent the sovereignty side as well. Now, people are coming after Lumpur, left, right and centre, um, because he's a threat to this whole thing. The knowledge he knows, the pictures that he has, if we all know about the empire, and how much control the empire holds over it, regardless of what you want to say. In this realm, empire control has been right from day one. Mm. He's challenging that through the sovereign tribal part. Now, his father was given a sword by the queen that's just passed away. Also, the standing king, when he was a prince, came out and met his father. Now, I don't want to say too much, but look, Lumper will touch on this, and if he doesn't, I'll prompt him too, because it's a story that needs to be told and, and, and understood because it has so much relevance that if we're going to take the empire and the crown and take our sovereignty back as a nation, um, you know, the treaty fires was very, very significant across the planet, let alone just our realm, the people who did it here. So, you know, everything seems to tie in back, pardon me, I also think, can I mention, I also think that um, the fact that he is unifying all Australian people, you know, that that is really significant. Um, talking about us all coming together and working together and unifying, I think that's that's a real threat to the system as well. Well, when they had the gathering in um, 
I think it was Allison with the my pronunciation isn't good, but the Wurindjering or Wurindjer T, what it, sorry, people. But that gathering was them to actually come together as tribal elders and leaders and, and discuss, you know, if this could go forth together in, in their planned unity. So we had, you know, Bruce and Buddy together with um, Larrakia people and others. I don't, they're the ones who I've connected with. So I mentioned their name out of respect. Um, but all these people came together and they started telling the stories of creation and, you know, about the water and about the earth and Mother Mother Earth and Gaia. And, you know, to experience what I did at Langarama blew, blew me away. Like I was tingling for about eight days after before I dropped off a cliff, you know. Um, I just wanted to go back and I think we all did. Um, we found something very unique. But, <laughs> just what you're talking about there, Darren, is um, something that Silvana shared when she sent me the letter, which was um, a beautiful message, of, an urgent message of unity between all people by Lerpner. So he wrote, as instructed by my late father, the great Guru Wiri, we are calling on all tribes across Australia and the planet to unite and walk together to protect our Mother Earth and the children. My father's words were, hurry up, the Gapu, water, is crying to me every day. I play Yidaki, didgeridoo, didgeridoo, every morning to heal the water, but it is crying from all four corners of the planet. You must unite the tribal people and the non-tribal people and work together to protect the Gapu. I send you this message in honour of my late, of my father, the late Dejalu Guru Wiwi, and great water healer for the planet, Lerpner. And I'm sorry if the, my mispronunciations, but I didn't do my best. But that was beautiful, I thought. Yeah. Uh, what I mean, like, um, I used to have a bit of, I guess, you know, from my experience, I um, when I went up there, things come out, you know. I've never really thought I was I was racist to, agree, but to a degree. Um, I thought I was very open, but. To not be able to make eye contact with people, you know, you try and walk away from it is a form of racism too. And to learn about that, how the, the pain is um, and the trauma is generational. Um, we think that we carry pain and trauma in our lives. And when you do a galactic reading, you find out that you're incarnated with some, you know, part of karma that you've got to clear. But the trauma that we experience is what we feel when, in our lives imagine being born into a fourth generation of where you're separated from your land like i i, I give, giggle to myself about the nwa saying you know you'll own nothing and be happy well the indigenous of around the world have been made to live like that since colonialism attacked all, all sovereign land so mm. um, I'm, I'm i'm getting a deeper understanding and a deeper respect and appreciation and i'm just honored and privileged to have been um yeah been in that position to feel it and i think that this is the next step for us as a as a nation is to understand what yolungu means yolungu is the the tribal man right and in their language and the balanda is the white man and but we, you know, myself, I didn't think that I had a right to any tribal connection or understanding of their culture and, you know, being a deep southern man and deep south, isn't that funny when you think about America? But in the stronghold of, you know, what we're living under in Melbourne, to understand their communal part and then the connection to, to source that we're all looking for and realise that they have it to a degree with their ancestral Part. Like in our society, if you get to 65, you're retired and you're five years off a retirement home. You get to 55 in a community, you know, a, a, a regional community, Indigenous community, you're an elder. Mm. Your word means so much more. You're a female, you're, you're the gagu of the of, of the area, the gagu of the tribe. Mm. So females really have a, a big, you know, say in how... Yes, there's lawmen and yes, there's landowners and they have their their place. The men, the warriors, but if the women don't unite and say that it's going to go, it doesn't happen. 
So when you look at the planet with Mother Gaia and the connection to the divine feminine and all, just so many things just went clunk, 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 clunk for me in this experience. And I think that um, but opening your heart to culture and connection back into the tribe, you live on this land. Mm. You have the right and you're a balander, a white man who, you know, and throughout the history before even Captain Cook came here, there's stories of the Dutch who, you know, and the, and the Chinese that lived hand in hand, you know, you know that through Tartaria. That was one thing that I've really held strong from the mm. strong Tartaria Australia uh, episodes was the Indigenous had access to to, to whatever was here um, before the British invaded the empire, mm. took up and started the mass cleanse. And it wasn't just all the Indigenous. The reason why we still have sovereign tribes in northern Queensland and northern Territory is the Pommy troops just couldn't survive and couldn't get to them, you know. So that was why these days with uh, inoculations, they came in through Darwin and 45 foreign troops went and forcibly vaccinated. People need to be aware we lost over 150 elders through that. But I, I just want to mention, speaking to what you were just speaking about, I had um, a, a sort of like a, um, a download when I was in between my sleep state and my waking state, which said that um, I was, you know, a person on, of this land for purpose and yes. that I'm a, I'm a guardian, you know, I'm a protector of this land in the same way because I was born here. And 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 so I think that's a really important message for people that are in Australia to know that they, they're here for a reason and they are themselves um, protectors um, just by virtue of, you know, being born in, in this country as well. And it came through really clearly, this message. Mm. So that was. So what he's saying that he really needs support at the moment, I'd love to share with you, is um, a plea uh, because he has been harassed and targeted because of everything that he is. And I, and I think the fact that he is making the difference that he is and is having the impact he is is why he's being so targeted and oppressed at the moment. He's shaking shit up big time up there exactly. because he, he's got no fear. This man has got the warrior spirit with an elegant tongue that is just oozing love and respect to anyone who, you know, I've watched him acknowledge other Indigenous people and uncle and auntie and he's just so humble and yet so, so brave because, make no mistake, this is a war against the system and he's taken it on. Um, we've all watched it and sorry to take over here, but when you remember that he's being charged and his children are being charged with assault against police. Mm. Watch what happened. We saw them throw them to the ground and a mm. fabricated sort of, and this is just how the system works. If you, this, this is one man, not a black man, not a tribal man. And this is one man who's a family man. His mm. kids got assaulted in a march that we've all undertaken. Then they charged his children to try and get him to back off. Then they've charged him. Now he's trying to fight it. When he was in court, he brought up challenges that were of high court wins in both Britain, England and Australia. Mm -hmm. And the judge ignored it, right? He, he dismissed it out of hand. Mm -hmm. Two weeks later, this so-called judge was actually made a member of the bar. So I don't know who he was for the, the time that he was sitting on this trial. Just a, it's it's Mickey Mouse, it's kangaroo. Now it's we need to help, and we need to be aware that if we're going to stand up and fight, and I don't care what truth you follow, everyone holds a key, everyone holds the information. You hold the discernment, you hold the spirit to make your own truth out of everything you hear. So don't be pointing the finger at people who are putting themselves out there to mm. try to help spread a message. And this is what this. Australian man has done, is tribal man, but he's a family man and he's doing this not just for the tribal people, it's for all of us. All of us, yeah. I'm with him. I've hugged him. I know if I'm in energy fields that I don't want to be near and I just wanted to be piggybacked by him all around the place. Mm -hmm. so the guy is a big teddy bear. Uh, he made pancakes with our youngest member on the trip. He just he, he can't stop giving and I think we need to sort of give some support, give some love. Absolutely. Send when someone gives so much, 
you know, we, we need to stand up and give back when he requires support and, and, and he needs our support. So we've got to do back for him what he's been doing the whole time for us. And the courage that he's shown has been incredible. Um, so if I can just share with you, I don't want to put it in the information below because of all the um, censorship that's happening, but I'm just going to read it out. Please support Lertner. And this was his words. I'm asking for the very first time for personal support and donations to help me defend my entire family for, from false charges based on police fraud, corruption and brutality and for me to defend myself and my family. I've never asked for one cent for me personally, but now I am. I stood up for my community, this nation and humanity, and now I'm asking you to help stand up for me, my family. I thank you in advance and together we will win. And that was from Lerpner. And here are the details. So please screenshot this image or pause this image and get the details and please send um, those donations to him that are really uh, needed at the moment. Uh, as I mentioned, I can't necessarily send this information, put it underneath because it might um, jeopardise my channel. So please just uh, screenshot this or write these uh, numbers down and, and support him at this time because this is a person who is going all out to stand up for Australian people and he doesn't discriminate between races or people. He sees us all as family and you can feel that in his videos and his energy and everything he's been doing for such a long time now. All his support for the, for the Indigenous youth and everything is incredible. So I'm just leaving that up there for a minute for people to get the details and um, please support, you know, this cause. It's so important at the moment. Yes. Yeah, if you, if you can at all, um, definitely help. Um, you know, we all, you know, we all, waste, we all waste so much money, right? People all go and spend $6 on a coffee or, you know, money here and there, and that's money that could really help. You know, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be 100 bucks. That's you know, a couple of dollars, five dollars, ten dollars. Um, you know, when a lot of people are all putting in that, that'll make a massive difference. Mm -hmm. And of course, this is someone who who's out there doing the work, right? And you know, he still needs to live. He's still got a family. He still needs to eat and have a house, and no doubt has a few legal expenses as well. So, um, you know, the well, thing is, if, if we can sort of get that off his mind, then he can continue to do his work. Which is, yeah. like we said, it's 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 for all of us. Um, you know, this is kind of. You know, we're seeing right. We all know through the history um, that we've been looking at that, you know, uh, uh, how do we say this? Another sort of force has come in and and imposed their law and their will on us. But that's not our law. We know this, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and so all we're really doing, or all not not me, um, all these you know fighters are doing is is trying to to rebalance everything, get it back to the way it should be. It's not it's not really even trying to change anything, is it? It's just trying to you know recapitulate i guess get it back to, to the balance of what it should be and and get rid of the the real virus yeah as as some people have said to me i've tried to and and people are worried about their existence and how they're existing right now i said it, it what they're not telling you to, to go and live in the desert they're not telling you to go and live, live they just want to maintain their lifestyle and maintain yours but you can't have it under the same system that, that is in now you can't have it under a totalitarian control their community system of 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 structure of community and how they solve problems and how they go forward is thousands of years old now we've got indigenous maps that you can layer over australia and it goes back to community and if you want you can sort of mirror that with municipality yes yeah, councils are we know they're a, a fragmentation but those buildings once we fill them full of love, light and energy, we can change that and say, well, hang on, it's not representing the council, it's representing the community. We bring back elders and, you know, um, mm. we still have our houses, we can still live, have our rubbish collected, but it'd be a, a lot more cleaner and a lot more <laughs> because people would be taking ownership of everything. We're coming awake a little bit more. We're not looking to be serviced. We're looking to give service and be part of, you know, building those communities and that mentality. And that's where I learned something of, you know, go back who I am. I'm I'm Darren. I'm here to make a difference in this world. Um, I love people, humans. Um, doesn't matter. I always, whenever I connect, if someone smiles at me, that's it. You know, you had me before you even said hello. You, you, you've got this essence. 
Um, Loomp is that that kind of guy too. Um, and what he showed us and what the rest of the elders showed us was that we can be so much more if we just open ourselves up to learn a little bit more. You know, it's not about um, gods or, you know, religion or anything. It's about your connection to self and spirit. And uh, Well, what I feel is happening as well is that there's a like um, – People are reconnecting to what is truly important. You know, they're, they're under, understanding that uh, the simplicity of life is, is the important thing, the reconnection to the land. You know, all those things that make life really complex and difficult, they're, they're going by the wayside because we're, we're just sort of defining what is really the priority, what is really important. And, and I think it does come back to that simplicity and that, that connection that the indigenous you know ancestors had so beautifully and and that's what we're missing you know and and that is all about uh, the connection to our heart and our soul mm -hmm. and essence of who we truly are as 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 a being and and that i think people are, are getting that you know yeah well for me i'm not i'm just saying from my perspective in my journey where i've come from it's just been like a bolt from the blue it's been beautiful that story about the didgeridoo and how they, because that came into, you know, learning about the frequencies and, and, and the sound and the 428 energy and what the planet, you know, resonates at and why grounding so important. Then when you hear that they, you know, had someone, uh, it was that sick that four of them played didgeridoos over different parts of the body and one had stopped and the three would keep going and another one had stopped, but it was to change the frequency level and and when they're telling you this story i don't know about anyone else but my mouth just kept going because i was just so it was like i was learning something that i'd already learned but yeah, yeah, understanding yeah. of how they've known about this information they've known about the so-called hidden you know um esoteric field or whatever mm. I, i'm just throwing it out there but the herbal, uh, you know, knowledge or lore of what plants were used for what things, you know, that that basically just di di gets rid of Not the, whole just pharmaceutical, the no. whole pharmaceutical industry because, you know, they can do it in a way that is much more effective and, and that's that's why it's such a threat as well. Part mm. of our programming is medicine, medicine, that word medicine, that medicine, medicine, medicine. Yeah, <laughs> incorporated that, but we know about the plant medicine. But when you get to somewhere and they tell you that where you're standing is the medicine, mm. and that's all of a sudden you just go, Oh, that's a totally different for me. That was just like, Oh, fantastic. Then my connection, you know, um, of energy connecting to it. Four, I think, four or five people actually cut themselves there because of the beach with the sharpness of some of the rocks. Nothing, not major, just, you know, I cut my big toe. But when I said something to Juma, Juma goes, ancestors wanted to keep a bit of you here. And, <laughs> we got, and you know, we <laughs> wouldn't think of that anywhere else. You did think, oh, bloody hell, I stood on something sharp. But mm. with your DNA. And, oh, and Asia in Russia, she talks about that. She says everything that happens to us, like if an insect bites us or whatever, it's all divine, universal um, perfection. You know, mm. they're, they're trying to stimulate something in your body or something like that. It's it's so she, it ties in with with her with how she views the world and and how it's all one um, quantum field that's all connected in divine wisdom. Because mm -hmm. yeah. the, the, I guess the other thing is the Langarama journey, the experience that I was able to go on. There was twenty three participants. We. <laughs> If you go to Bali, you're going to pay excess of three grand, you know, with your spending money just for 10 days. You go up there, you fly up, it costs you $1,000 to fly and stay mm -hmm. and $1,000 to a foundation, which is tax deductible, which is going into the communities. But you, I just, I, like, I can't believe that um, we get this opportunity. Um, you know, if you've followed yourself to Epic or you've followed yourself to Makadar or you've followed yourself to through something where you want to reconnect, here's your chance, you know. Um, the the one that I went on is is an introduction where you get introduced to, to country and, and to community. Was that the one there? Um, yes, yes. That, there's one that's happening right now. 
Uh, yeah. Famous there, to, or someone from the sporting uh, fields there with his family, which is beautiful. Um, every journey is different. Everything sort of evolves a little bit, bit more because you know they're embracing us, and it, it relates on the success of people wanting to reconnect and do it. But after this, in mid-year, there's one where we actually go 800 kilometres into Arnhem Land where we have to travel through um, different communities. So we need some permits. And and the first journey is your actual, I guess, initiation into, you know, if you're really ready to participate and go there because there's some places, like where we're going is is so much more sacred. And I shouldn't say that than Darwin because Larrakee is very sacred, but it's remote. And there's certain areas like they don't they have areas that are burial areas, but it's not like a cemetery like we'd have in suburbia. And there's a certain distance that you can't walk or go in. And um, not even Clary, who's the the elder for, that we know, is even allowed to walk in there. So we are going into an area where you know few. Uh, someone told me that probably no more than fifty of the white Australians have been there in the last hundred years. So the reconnection for self, but the reconnection to culture is I've he- had some healing, but I've been told that whoever goes there, you're healing part of the planet as well, but you got to understand that there's a sacred sort of connection to it. So yeah, I guess I'm bouncing all over the place, but that's... No, that's good. I mean, that's that's what, what we're missing. You know, I've thought about this, you know, a lot throughout my life is there's no, you know, there's no ritual. Like it, no. being being a white boy, it's like when do you become a man? And unfortunately, in Australia, it, it seems to be you know when you're 18 and you can go and get as drunk as as, as you know as possible, right? Uh, and, yep. be, and be a complete idiot. It's, um, that's all we've got. Yeah. And, and so th- this whole thing of of ritual and connection to the land and and the, you know gaining knowledge and and the understanding of okay, now I'm a whatever, right? Now I'm a teenager. Now I'm a man. Now I'm this. Um, you know, that we're missing it, and it's an it's a big, you know, thing, you know, that that um affects society in a in a big way because you never get when we don't get the leaders coming up, we don't get people confident in themselves in in what they've got to teach. We and and this is a whole system. Um, I was going to say before you were talking about it, it's a lot to do with it, it's all to do with service, right? Mm. Well, all these people that are you know enforcing all these rules. They're public servants, and, and we're the yeah. public. They yeah. actually work for us, and, and that's yes. the biggest problem. And it's like you were saying, we don't have to lose everything. They just have to become the servants again. There's two, that's words that's that's missing the, they work two words that's missing at the moment in our, and it's it's honour and integrity. Yes. I've said I coached for, for 25 years at all different levels, and the last two, th- two years I did women, and it was a blessing. It was the best thing I ever did. But like you said, Campbell, I coached under 19s for years because I'm sick of, I've actually attended a few funerals myself from young boys who have taken their lives because they get to 19 or 20 and they've been exposed to the senior football club where they may have, you know, had substances or whatever and lost their way and then thought that they couldn't come back. No, confusion, stickiness. That's, that's Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm. That's that's my desire to actually reach those people before they get to that. There's no tomorrow. Well, hang on. Have you tried this? Because this is something that you'll find yourself. But mm. you're so right. At 17, 18, the kids at 16 are getting pissed anyway, right? But by the time they get to 18, we glorify it by having an 18th and all the uncles and aunties and everyone and everyone. There's a big punch bowl. Everyone gets pissed. I, Uncle Clary about that and he said when you're a young boy up to 14 you can hang around but you don't say anything after 14 you can start being involved in some family issues and you can have a voice but you don't step over the line you know you get but if you're born into that you're going to be a lawman because that's the section that you or the person that you are in your family you'll be educated by the one that already is at that stage from 14 onwards by the time you get to 18 then you have ceremony where you will go somewhere. Now, you could be in the old days, you'd go for three months out into the wilderness and you'd have to find your own water, build your own fire, kill your own food and eat your own food, and then you would get cut in some tribal forms. Now, this is with the utmost respect to my tribal brothers and sisters, uncles and aunties, but I'm just trying to show 
that their culture <coughs> is a rite of passage in the way that it goes through. So you get educated. If you're a female girl, doesn't mean that you're, you know, not that important. You're going to be the gagu eventually once you get married and you have children. The gagu means that you're the head of the family. Nothing happens. If the lawman goes out and does something that the gagu doesn't agree with, she can change it in an instant. Does that come with age and experience? That yes, they- it does. Yes. 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 Yeah. yes. You and know, and that's how they do. do. There are other cultures like that, you know, Japanese, for example, where they revere their elderly. And, you know, that's so missing missing from our Western culture. You know, they just get put in nursing homes, tucked away, and then they don't see anyone. And all their knowledge and experience of of their whole lifetime is lost. But Mm. why is that? Why is that? We've been controlled by an entity that wants to keep us dumbed down. Who gets smart? The Mm. elderly as they get older because they've been bone so many times by the system and what have you that when they speak it i know you're insane you you need to go into a home or we'll give you some medicine that'll actually shut you up and that's another part that's missing isn't it that's that's the wisdom because grandparents you know used to be and and still in traditional um situations are a great source of the knowledge for the grandchildren they 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 are one of the biggest teachers Mm -hmm. yes Yes. You know, um, and, and often and, they get on so well with the grandchildren, the grandparents. It's like it skips a generation. You know, sometimes kids don't get on that well with their parents, but they actually often find they have incredible bonds with their grandparents. Um, it's a different, yeah, it's a different relationship because there's yeah. no, you know, they don't have to be the hard parent, right? They can just be yeah. the soft pillow kind of the whole yeah. time and their best friend, and and that's needed. Mm. You know, kids clearly need something like that. I mean, look, look at what's the balance in the society. Yes. You know, who have they got to turn to? I mean, they, they end up bloody turning TikTok on and, you know. And that's why bringing them into suburbia in Darwin and taking them away from the, the regional or the cultural, and, and let's face it, we haven't invested in the regional that much to give them, you know, um, a chance to operate. Like when I go to Nooker, I ask someone who said, you're going to you're gonna get blown away of how what we provide for them. Everyone gets shown on a current affair that they burn a house down or they did this or they did that. Hang on a minute, you know. Let's 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 not be that blinded by the MK Ultra programming. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I've got a bit of a scoop to share with you. It, it sort of indicates, you know, the the sort of corruption and tyranny behind the whole system that we're up against. But um, it came from a high level intel source that I had, and I just sort of thought it was interesting in this conversation because it talks to the you know, what's happening underneath that we don't see. So um, there, this is the information I received. There's a question mark over whether um, Jacinta A, you know, I won't say her name, the ex-New Zealand um, Prime Minister, resigned because the Ratana family, the Ratana family have been in charge in apparently in New Zealand. Um, they were the ones originally that signed the Waitangi Treaty and things like this may not have ratified their normal yearly cycle necessary for the British Crown to rule New Zealand. And people are speculating whether this coincidental date signified her jumping ship right at that time because this happened literally a day before she left that office. So this shows all this undercurrent of stuff that's going on that we don't hear about, we don't know about, but the you know the the, the high level corruption and the and the you know the deals made behind the scenes that that have, you know, created this system in the first place. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree. I think when the old the old girl kicked the bucket in Queensland, uh, sorry, in, yeah, well, you know, over in... You know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, that, was, that, was, that was the end of the empire's reign. Now, if you look at it, it's not really Ch- Chucky who, who we're looking well, at. And the real... questions the, about his coronation, well, though, isn't there? Like yeah, if the one actually, you know, if he if he was coronated correctly, which the, means- the one with the pure um, blood that's still existing is is Wee Willie. He's the one who's from the Spanish king who's got the bloodline that's you know where it's because they can only um, they can only basically re- reproduce through the bloodlines of the royalty. So even though Diana, blah blah blah, the dad. Um, yeah, is the, the Spanish one, not Charlie. Mm, mm. You know, we know that. Um, what's what's the ranger's name? Um, uh, Harry. Well, who does he look like? He looks like that other. Yeah, know? the the major. 
It's just it's <laughs> in, 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 intertwined and ancestral, but no, I don't care anymore. I'm so beyond that because I can see that when he came here, he bowed down to Lumpur's mis, um, his father. Mm. That's all been taken off YouTube and and stuff, but he's got the the photos and he's got the words for it. You know, the significance that the tribal sovereigns play across the planet is what's going to bring us all together and through to the next next stage that you know everyone's talking what ascension or you know leveling up or whatever a new world we're going to smash into another planet and become one no i i i, I say everyone's looking for someone to come and say we're, uh, we are we're the already white here hats. Mm -hmm. we are the white hats <laughs> we're just getting we're just getting leveled up with our yeah you know um totally agree yeah okay. i mean well, it's it, all it's all good and fine to wait to believe in a savior but you know, what happens if they don't turn up? So I feel a manipulation of everyone going to Canberra again, you know, trying to get that. We did that. We went there. We healed, you know, we healed that. We showed who we are, but we had to go back to our areas to heal that and to connect. Once it all ignites, if we're all where we're supposed to be, and we will be because the universe will make sure of that, mm -hmm. that switch comes or that flash or whatever, that's when we ignite and we ignite into that next dimension. I don't know where that came from. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's <much> of inspiration. <laughs> You're tuning in upstairs. Um, so um, it's uh, we were hoping that Lerpner could join us, but he is actually at this camp at the moment, so it's perfectly understandable that he's got his hands full and wasn't able to be here. But, you know, we send a message out of love and support uh, to him at this time and really hope that in some way this video can um help support everything that he's doing and and his family family and himself so please mm. spread this video um love to make it go viral and please um support the uh cause if you can with a donation however much as campbell said And um, if if there are ways, other ways that we can really um, support our uh, Indigenous brothers and sisters at the moment, what what are some other ways you think that we can really, um, both of you, move forward at the moment in terms of this ascension and this um, upgrading of Mother Earth? Um, yeah, I'll go first because Darren's probably got a much better answer than me. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, no I was just going to say... To me, it's all about recognizing that you know everyone you see out there is is, is on your side, right? They're 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 part of us. It's it's the people in the suits, you know, on the screens, yelling at you, telling you how to live your life. All this, they're the enemy, and they're a common enemy. It, it's not your neighbor. Um, and so the biggest thing we can do is recognize that and just start to heal, right? Just start to to be friendly, smile at people, you know, start to. To come together as one and and just build that 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 you know that uh, community really, and um, I think that's the biggest thing you know. Learned people you know we just don't trust each other anymore, right? We don't feel like we can lean on each other anymore. There's all this division, and the main reason is because they've got us all thinking that it's all about you know the physical and that we're not connected, like we were talking about before, that we're not connected you know to this spirit to the energy of the realm, that it's not all one. We're told no, no, you're all separate, you're all separate, so. You know, the only way to get forward is to fight other people. But, you know, clearly, look where that's gotten us. So, yeah, just, yeah, just don't believe the hype. Yeah, great message. Mm. What about you, Darren? Um, well, I'd suggest to people how it started for me is to, to understand what the land name, tribal land name that you reside, where you live. The suburban name actually has a connection. There was, before the suburb was named, there was tribal people on it. So maybe look into what part of the land and, you know, where I live is uh, Boon Wurrung, B-O-O-N, Boon Wurrung. And it, and it goes from, I think, Werribee all the way down through Port Phillip Bay, just underneath Melbourne and out through to Bensdale down in Gippsland. That's a big area. So um, a totem animal is a crow. So when, you know, I realised that, the first time I went and did a... Cow ceremony, yeah, perfect. 
<laughs> you look down, you can see where you live. And there's 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 other maps that people have worked on which are, are reconnecting and realigning. So where's New South Wales and Victoria and Queensland on that? You just, you know, the states, what people have got to understand is a state, well, deep state, you know, state control <laughs> means total yeah, so totalitarian. You know, having having a prime minister is one person over all these. That's that that just can't work because mm. there's different areas that have different problems. You know, different areas need different times of burning, the back burning, and to learn about the cold burning and why they do it is because it burns underneath the the level of the trees, but high enough to actually activate the seeds that have got a really tough exterior. But need to be heated up. If they burn through the canopy, canopies, it burns the seed out and it can't regenerate. So they know more about the land, and we just, you know, need to understand it. But there's some of their values that we can take as far as, you know, the only way that you can sort of reconnect is want to, and if you want to, you'll find. As I ask, I've come down here. I want to connect with some indigenous in the south in Melbourne. I've now cleared my mind that there is controlled opposition and there's, you know, sovereign people. I'll discern that, but I'm a light-loving being. I just want to meet everyone. And now I have the words to actually introduce myself and ask, oh, are you from around here? Not what tribe are you from or, you know, what's your connection? Then you will start up a yarn. And a yarn is just a conversation where you share energy, experiences and knowledge. And... What could be more beautiful in understanding some of that, you know, with the fabricated language that we've got to learn what a yarn is? Mm -hmm. Say goodbye in, in, in Nuka. It's, well, you know, if you need to go to the toilet for a number two, I'm going for a gunner. You know, <laughs> they teach all this sort of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> better, than, better than our word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it is. Yeah, exactly. You right. know, in tribute to all the people in, in Nuka, my, my sister Jennifer. Jennifer... Rogers, um, we took a video of her throwing a hand line into the into the water, and one of the girls put it up on TikTok. We had 1.5 million views before we'd left the 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 coastline. People are interested; they want to reconnect. You only have to reach out, and when they got their hand out, waiting for you to reach out, you just got to grab on. Mm. And another example of um, you know, language that that's been um, you know basically corrupted is freedom so free and then dom is uh domination so it's, yeah. it's freedom when you say freedom you're actually freedom, um, limiting and restricting what freedom is because it's got dom on the end of it so yeah, yeah, it's okay. fascinating yeah. you know that what they've yeah. done with that language um I, i'd love to share just before you go because i know Can um, I, sorry i don't it, mean to interrupt but with oh. with lampa lampa hasn't brought this up we've we've pushed this right um this is something that I've really put my energy behind. Silvana, Andrea, Susanna, everyone who is on there, we, we've been blessed and given something. This money doesn't go directly to Lerpa. I've got a, there's a guy in Adelaide who's controlling all of this and who's very, uh, so it's going to be by the book. Everything's been, it's only for his legal fees. Lerpa said, I don't want the money for my personal, I just want it for the legal fees because this system is going to take him right through the chain and he needs QCs and barristers and, you know, we have to get some people who can fight them at their own game, which we, we are because it's already crumbling. Yeah. And it'll prove to everyone else who's got court cases around there just how evil these people are. Mm. So money that is raised, anything that's will go to community. You know, we caught fish and we didn't eat it. We straight down to the next community group and it was passed over to them to, to, to have. That's how it works. It's not... Lumper is a very proud man, and this has taken a lot for, to get him to agree to it. Um, yeah. He's a great, and I just, you know, I'm blessed to be able to stand shoulder to shoulder with him. And I know if you're full of shit or if you aren't, um, just from hanging around in football circles for so long. So this is for all of us, and he's a man to be, to to be, you know. I don't. He doesn't want to be worshipped. Doesn't want to be followed. But you can be inspired. Yeah be the best version of yourself by watching how this man's operating. You know, bless you, Lamp, yeah. everything you've given us. Yeah. And what he does may literally change the course of, you know, the history, at least in Australia. So, you know, that five bucks going, you know, towards legal fees rather than, you know, the coffee or whatever, 
Mm. Um, you know, literally, you're helping your your kids, your grandkids, your next generation. You know, the indigenous. You're helping the the, the world, right? Really, because mm. mm. this is stuff that needs to be done, and we know how the legal system works. Mm. They basically will take you until you're broke, so you can't fight anymore. Mm. That's right. That's, that's right. How that's how it works. Yeah, that's in sorry. the way that they've stopped anyone from standing up. Yeah. Um, Throughout our history, to to go against the system, it's been through the whole judicial legal system, yeah. and um, I've given experience that myself personally. Um, so, what about um, if we just finish with a beautiful um, share here that I think is really significant? Uh, I'll just bring it up on the screen. Called Wirritjen. That was what I was trying to say before, and I couldn't say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. But this is it. Yes, yes. Would you like to read it for us, Darren? Ritian is an ancient prophecy. One day the black, white, brown, yellow, green, blue, purple, rainbow tribes would stand together to create a positive direction for humanity. That time has come, and united we are, the Ritian. We invite all to join. Unite everyone to create a prosperous future for all humanity, not just us, everyone. Beautiful. Mm. Thank you so much, both of you. It's been really wonderful to chat with you. Very profound words. And I hope people please get behind what we've been talking about and share this video. And together, you know, we are incredibly powerful. We can make a huge difference. So just believe in yourself and um Hopefully our beautiful future is not too far away, guys. So, <laughs> um, so the ones bless you so much. For. Thanks, Thanks so guys. Much. Thank you. I'd really like to de dedicate whatever's said after here to the people of Nooka in, in Arnhem Land. Um, Clary Rogers and Jennifer Rogers, who were the elders who first came out to our city, and to Juma and Anita Fagio, who are Larrakea uh, people and elders. And Juma is the one who told the story of creation with Stick in the Sand in Alice. Normally in, in my past, if I went somewhere where there was 20 people, I'd get along with two. Um, <laughs> but on this one, it was just, it was kind of very similar to Epic, but different. Um, just a feeling. I remember asking Dale in the chat, what did he feel anything when he went to Uluru? Because I hadn't, hadn't been there myself and, you know, learning about the earth and the frequencies and connection. And I'm starting to become a lot more aware of who, my existence and, and my connection to these things as well you know learning to feel like it's not always I'm hungry when I feel this in my stomach it's my solar plex you know so yeah, yeah that's right it's refining isn't it refining that that um energetic um sort of body yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but uh yeah just to be with um that group of people that in in that place at that time and understanding uh, the significance of being on that sacred land uh, was was a gift. I remember we sat around the fire one night, and um, well, every night we sat around the fire. But one night we were just before it got dark, and everyone was talking about how blessed we were to follow our path and to be there. And you know, we we did well to choose to come. And I just sort of paused and went, I don't think we chose. I think. We were we were summoned. We were we were chosen to come here in this group in this setting, and uh, yeah, it's a, I'd never felt anything like it. So it was um, something very spiritual, and I, I am only new to coming in, into that you know um, reality of realizing you know um, that's the frontier I'm chasing. Beautiful. Are we?